Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 24th, and we would like to welcome all the people that are watching us on internet this morning, and we would like to invite you to join us next week at St. Matthew's on Talmadge Road as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. We will have services at 9 and 1030. And if all things are ready, let us worship the Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. And please be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. <laughs> when the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women 
including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. We shall re read Psalm 68, beginning at verse 1, in unison. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. And let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to the Lord. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows. God in his holy habitation. God gives solidarity a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a gracious rain, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O oh kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fairy ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. 
I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. And I would like to thank the Reverend Billy Stranthorn, who has uh, provided many stories for my sermon today. And I would like to start with a story. I found it very humorous. I tried it out on somebody and they didn't laugh, so. Um, but Isaac Asimov once told a hilarious story about a Rabbi Feldman who was having trouble with his congregation. They couldn't agree on anything. The president of the congregation finally said, Rabbi, this can't continue. There has to be a conference, and we have to settle all areas of dispute once and for all. And the rabbi agreed. At the appointed time, the rabbi, the president, and 10 elders met around a magnificent mahogany table in the conference room of the synagogue. One by one, the issues were de dealt with, and on each issue, it became more and more apparent that the rabbi was a lonely voice in the wilderness. The president of the synagogue said, come, rabbi, enough of this. Let's vote and allow the majority to rule. He passed out slips of paper, and each man made his mark. The votes were collected, and the president said, you may examine them, Rabbi. It is 11 to 1 against you. We have the majority. Offended, the rabbi rose to his feet and said, so now you think because the vote that you're right and I'm wrong. Well, that's not so. And at that point, he raised his arms impressively and looked up heavenly word, and he said, I stand here and I call upon the Holy One of Israel to give us a sign that I'm right and you're wrong. No sooner than were these words out of his mouth when there was a deafening clap of thunder and a brilliant flash of lightning that struck the mahogany table and cracked it in two. The room was filled with smoke and fumes and the president and the elders were hurled to the floor. Surrounded by rubble, the president stood there erect and untouched, his eyes and smiles flashing with triumph. Slowly, the president lifted himself out of the rubble. His hair was singed. His glasses were hanging on his face by one ear. His clothes were in total disarray. And then finally, he said, all right, 11 to 2, we still have the majority. <laughs> okay. I thought that was good. Unfortunately, we all know that not everything that is done in the church or in the name of the church is always done for the glory of God. 
We know that at times in history, the church has ignored the will of God in order to have its own way. As a consequence, there has been discord and disunity in God's church. This disunity is apparent in the number of denominations that we have today. At first, it was just a family squabble. One group put scripture above church structure and called for change, but they were rejected, so they protested. So then the one family became two, the Protestants and the Roman Catholics. But the squabbles, after the squabble started, it snowballed. It wasn't long before the Protestants began disagreeing and began, dis became disagreeable towards each other. And there was disunity in the body of Christ. That doesn't sound anything like the prayer that we heard today. And the Lord prayer doesn't sound like the prayer that Jesus offered today. He offered the prayer to his father for himself, for the disciples, and for the church of, church of the future. And the prayer recorded in John's gospel today is a prayer for unity. It has been called the real Lord's Prayer because it's one that Jesus prayed for his disciples. It was the Lord's Prayer for his companions and his church. It was the first prayer for Christian unity. Jesus prayed that his disciples may be one. There was a Christian conference in Atlanta a while back, and Max Lucado was one of the speakers at this conference. And in referring to Christian unity, Max said, on the last night of his life, our master did not pray for the health of the disciples, nor the success of the disciples, nor even the happiness of the disciples. He prayed that they would get along with each other. In other words, our Lord's prayer was for unity between his disciples and unity within his church. So how do we accomplish this? How do we bring about and work towards unity? First, it has to start with us. We can't wait for somebody else to start it. We have to be proactive. We have to take the first steps. We have to stop doing and saying those things that lead to, cause, and perpetuate the disunity among us. We have to be the first to act. Another story by, about Max Lucado. He said that one day his wife brought home a monkey. His daughters were thrilled at the thought of having this monkey, but he wasn't. He had all kinds of questions regarding that. Where was the monkey going to eat? And his wife said, well, that's going to be easy. He's going to sit down at the table and eat with us, just like any other member of the family. Then he asked, where is it going to sleep? And she said, well, that's simple. He's going to sleep with us in our bed. Then he asked, but what about the smell? And she said, oh, he'll get used to you. I did. Okay. Then Max Lucado went on to say, before you comment on the odor of someone else, check your own odor first. That's what Jesus meant when he said, let the one who is without sin cast the first stone. Unity has to begin with us, and it has to begin with our personal relationship with Christ. We have to be one with Christ first. Our lives have to knit together with his through faith, and it has to begin in our church, as a congregation, our lives have to be knit together in love through Christ. We have to pull together. In being one with Christ, we just have to pull together. Which makes me think about 
a Midwest farm fair. Mainly, spectators gather around an old-fashioned horse pull. And the winner of the horse pull, the, the grand champion horse, pulled 4,500 pounds by itself. The runner-up was very close. He pulled 4,400 pounds. Well, the next year, the folks thought it might be neat to see um, what a team could pull. So they uh, started a new pull requiring teams. And separately, now, mind you, that they pulled about 4,500 apiece. But when hitched together to work as a team, the winning horses were able to pull more than 12,000 pounds, almost three times what either one of them could pull by themselves. Now, imagine the powerful force if we could exert as a con congregation, as a denomination, and as the church in the world, if we all pulled together as a team. You see, we can't accomplish as much if we're going to be going in 10 different directions. We have to have a common goal and a common purpose. When we have that common purpose, that common vision, that common goal, then we can do almost anything with the Lord's help especially when that goal or vision is God-given and God-driven. And in order for us to accomplish our dream, we have to have faith. We have to trust and depend upon God, and we have to pull together. We have to call upon Christ and live out the love of Christ in all that we do. In a family circus comic, Little Billy was praying one day, and he prayed, Make me good, and if you don't get through to me the first time, please keep on trying till I answer. That should be our prayer. As Jesus prayed for our unity, we should continue to pray to be reminded. We should pray because we're not called to do it alone. We're called to pull together to serve God through Christ. Make us all one, Lord. And if you don't get through the first time, please keep trying till we answer and begin to pull together. This idea of unity starts with us. We have to pull together, and then we have to keep on climbing that hill. The secret is not giving up. Unity isn't easy. Most of us have never learned how to disagree in love or how to love those with whom we disagree. We're like the poet who wrote, to dwell above with saints we love, that will be grace and glory. To live below with the saints we know, well, that's another story. Unity isn't easy. But Jesus not only prayed for it, he modeled it for us. Remember when the disciples came to him complaining about the people who were preaching and doing signs and wonders in Jesus' name, but were not part of the crowd of disciples. They were ready to throw them out of town or to call down lightning upon their bodies. Jesus told the disciples not to stop them and said, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Christian unity is not determined by whether we agree with each other about every interpretation of scripture or doctrine or form of church government. Christianity and Christian unity is determined by whether we love one another and whether we reflect the love of God in Christ for the world. There will always be that which separates Christians from Christians and denominations from denominations, but we can still affirm and celebrate God's love for us and the love we have for one another. In ways of love, the ways of mutual respect, understanding and acceptance, 
we can be one in Christ. We have to continue to work towards unity and understanding between each other, between the races, between the cultures, and between denominations. Now, we may never reach it, but by working towards it, at least we'll be going in the right direction. We're called to demonstrate our unity in Christ through love. It has to start with us. We have to pull together, and we have to keep on climbing, no matter what the vote. Christ's prayer and Christ's command are still that we be one as he is one with God, and that we love one another as he loves us. Amen. Let us affirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed, found in our bulletin that was emailed to us or in the Book of Common Prayer, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found once again in our bulletin or in the Book of Common Prayer, page 387, form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Father, we ask you to heal all those who are sick and injured, especially Dan, Judy, Roger, Sally, Rocky, Linda, Phil, Lori, Heather, and Josephine. We ask you to heal all those who are suffering from COVID-19. And we ask you to be with the families who have lost loved ones in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, 
Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in heart, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son. so that we can maintain safe, safe practices while worshiping together. I look forward to seeing all of you. Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly, are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord? For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus, your only son, to say, share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Who, whenever, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in unity with the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body. Now, let's now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.